Netflix, and I'm your host of Color Play Live, three days a week, Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm <clears throat> seeing a lot of people on saying some pretty sweet things. Thank you so much. There's lots of hugs going around telling me not to push myself. I just, I think another day of rest, plus I got some colors to finish for you guys, you know, and uh, I want to kind of do a sneak peek. <clears throat> I guess Tuesday will be the sneak peek day, but sorry about my throat and I didn't bring anything <clears throat> to drink in here. Normally I don't have to worry about that. So a uh, little bit of business. Uh, senior helper, she's probably not on right now, but she did mention in the feed that um, she was worried that the member program was going away and uh, it didn't fit her budget until a little bit later this month. And uh, I had already made the announcement on the website and the last, sorry, I have paint on my glasses here. And the last email campaign was that we're gonna extend it more towards the 15th if the card, when the cards are gone, the cards are gone. But there are people that are on first of the month budget because they're on disability, or maybe they're in the military, or uh, there's also those of us that are on Social Security. I'm in that group. I'm over 70. So we get our money different times of the month, and I don't want to prohibit anybody from being able to join us. And so... Uh, still looking for houses, still, I have a flake. This is gonna drive me crazy. There's a big flake of white paint on these glasses. Oh my goodness. I can't believe the first two minutes of the broadcast. I'm gonna, I scraped it off with a spoon. Let's hope it comes off. There we go. I can't see if I can't see. So lots of comments just popped up. Catherine Mefford says, good morning. Sandy Sanders says, hope you're feeling better. Thank you very much, Sandy. We've got John N. in here. D. Lee, hey, sweetheart. Uh, S. Dalton, Sally Dalton's here. Andy, Andrea Shirley's here. Renee Bummer's Broomer is here, not Bummer, Broomer. Yeah, I don't know if it was food poisoning or not, but feeling pretty puny. I'm not really 100% today, but... Fun fact, and there are books written about this, color actually makes you feel better. So, you know, I've always wondered how we manage to retain our employees for so long, why they enjoy their job so much, why we still get excited when we were still pouring the watercolors, a whole tray of watercolors would go into the baker's rack and we're all excited when it's gleaming and beautiful and sparkling and They've proven that, um, now think about this, when you're at a slot machine in Las Vegas and you're waiting to pull the trigger, it's Brunner, good, okay, thank you, sweetheart, Brunner. Um, um, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I don't wanna get anybody's names wrong. So when you're in Vegas pulling that slot machine, there's this endorphin or there's this release of hormones while you're waiting to see if you won something, right, for that three or four seconds, however long it takes to see if you won. Well, they're already proving that working with color uh, releases the dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, oxytocin. It's not oxycotton, the drug. It's oxytocin, some other hormone or chemical that gets released that makes us feel better. And I'll say, even if I'm having a long day, I always feel better after I play with color. I play with color with you guys. Thank you. Well, it helps when you put on brows and a little lipstick, right? Doesn't hurt, you know, take a couple extra minutes in the mirror. I always feel better when I got my brows and my lips on. So it can, it can cover me up good, right? So working with color, uh, again, I think we need to deep in, dive into that someday. I really want to do research on that. Uh, you know, they did that uh, study years ago of what is your color to wear to make you more powerful. And, you know, are you a winter or a fall or whatever because of your skin tone? And you can be more impressive as a banker if you wear this shade of blue that matches your skin tone. But they weren't that far off 
on how powerful color is, how it makes us feel. I have so many people call me and tell me, oh my goodness, when I'm playing with your watercolors or something that sparkles, I don't feel the pain. Or I'm distracted enough, you know, to where I, I'm in this super hyper focus and I'm not feeling what was making me feel bad before. I've had therapists tell me that when they uh, can't reach their patients, that, and again, we are bringing the twinks back, they would throw the watercolors out all wetted down. A, uh, uh, you're right, Dee Lee, a photographer can capture the twinkle in the eye, right? The, uh, she would lay out the watercolors and just paper and say, we're just gonna paint today, right? And just start painting and the patient that would not talk, yes, endorphins, exactly. The patient that would not talk, I don't care if they're talking about their favorite syrup to put on their waffles, as long as they're talking and communicating. I mean, that's the whole therapist's goal, is to get you to open up and find that safe space in your brain. Thank you, Furry Art Mother, for the good wishes. I called her at three o'clock this morning when she messaged me, and I'm like, what are you doing up? So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. All right. So that bit of news, the, um, to find that uh, member card, just go right to the top of the menu now. We moved it out of the shop area. There's now a section that says Art of Color Club membership slash color play deals. It's in the color play deal page. So you can find them. Because I had three people ask me where to find it, and one person asked me to make it... Uh, uh, more available for a little bit longer. And that was Senior Helper. I know she watches these videos, so Senior Helper, you can. You were up at three as well, Sandy. Great. Yeah. Friday night, right? All right. So I have to admit, I'm just as human as everybody else out there. When I did my Dutch pour recipe, I didn't measure anything. Now, that doesn't mean after you get comfortable with a technique that you've got to, you know, measure precisely with a spoon exactly what you're using. But remember, I had opened up my video by saying I, the only other Dutch pour attempt I did, that blow dryer blew everything off my table. Completely blew everything off my table. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. She said, hope you're feeling well from Blind Awakening. Um, and then... You know, while I'm very comfortable now not measuring the uh, the deep base or my mix, my custom mix with the varnish to do my bloom swipe, I'm comfortable enough now with the consistency and getting excited about how it works. I knew with the Dutch pour I needed it thinner, but I didn't measure that varnish. And if you go back and watch that video, I was squeezing a whole lot of varnish in some of the cups and a little bit less and I mean, this is why consistency is such a big deal. Now, I did say at the end, you know, that my first uh, th thing with this in my mind was, were all the paints gonna dry? Yeah, because of consistency, but I was trying out a new base. Uh, it's not normal to necessarily use a satin enamel base on the bottom of a Dutch pour. I did add a lot of GAC 800 to it. And quite frankly, I'm really pleased how the white dried. While there's little ridges in my paint, the white dried really shiny. So we're gonna do a little flip here for you guys and see this board. This was that Dutch pour, uh, the second one that I did. Now you can tell when you see this area right here, you can see by me adding that GAC 800 to that bare enamel, that was really pretty how that dried. I also like that there. It looks like there wasn't enough paint all over the whole piece after it's completely dried because there's some spots. When you see ridges in your paint and it's not smooth like the bloom swipes I've been doing, this means the paints are drying at different rates. Some are drying faster than others. Now, I don't have that horrible ridges in this thing. I've seen some way worse. These little lightning lines, like this, something could be done with this. 
I mean, I'm going to do something with this piece. I really want to study it. I may be doing a black background and reshaping my forms here or just make it a really pretty abstract, but add something that's going to give me some negative space to it because the colors are stunning. I'm absolutely beautiful how it sparkled, how the interference did what I wanted, but there was way too much paint on this for a Dutch pour. As I thought about it, the Dutch pour is usually a little amount of paint in the middle and bloom, 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 yeah, blow back out. Yeah, the ridges do give it personality, but if people, and actually under resin, uh, uh, Catherine Mefford has a point when you resin over something that has these ridge points, first of all, you can rub or paint those colors out and even make it more interesting, make it an even pronounced part of the piece. But under the resin, that texture and stuff is real pretty. But these, some of these colors just turned out really gorgeous. I guess I still was on the Easter egg mode. Here's this first one, the little one, right? But you can definitely see that the paints dried at different consistencies, right? And I made the same mistake everybody else makes. Get excited, come in, I wanna do something really quick. Oh, I think these colors came out really pretty. These will be great resin. Um, and I'm, I really like this canvas company. Uh, they weren't that expensive. I'll think I'll, now that I brought up the name, I'm gonna have to show you the name, but this particular one was tight enough when the big ones I did, a, they, they come in eight and twelves and the spin swipe works so well with this company's canvas. But you can see the consistencies are all off. So I'm going to mix one, measuring it out this time. And then I've created uh, my own little consistency board. Now there is a gentleman by the name of Mark Gilday. <clears throat> That's G-U-I-L-D-A. He owns a company called Poor Scraper Pete. He came up with the idea of the consistency chart. Tammy Anderson and many other artists promote it. Okay, but the concept was, and he was a struggling fluid artist that loved what it looked like, but couldn't quite get the idea of all the different consistencies. How would I fix the area? Well, you can... <clears throat> you can add more paint on top and paint in there and it'll net and it'll it'll automatically fill it in by painting it in. You can add uh, varnish in there to fill it in and then resin over the top. But anyway, he came up with the idea of the consistency chart because he wanted to make sure all his paints had the same consistency before he jumped in and did what I did. And can I tell you how many people I get on the phone with, remind them to get the consistency chart, tell them to go to Poor Scraper Pete or Tammy Anderson's channel. You can download his chart. Basically what it is, is it's a section across the top to put dots of paint and the numbers down one side, one to eight, and you tilt it up. And do they all drop at the same rate in the same, or is some way down here and some are way up here? Now, if you have some that are too high or too low, you can fix the two thin ones if you really want to by adding a little heavy gel medium, or you could thin down the ones that are thicker, but there are so many techniques that you can do, even if the paint wasn't as thin as you wanted for the Dutch pour, or as thick as the bloom, as long as they are all the same consistency, you're gonna have a successful pour. How you doing, Audra? Nice to see you, sweetheart. So I didn't have to, I didn't get a chance to go down and download his chart, but I kind of made my own little one. I've got little boxes across the top to put blobs of paint. I'm, I'm going to try to get them the same amount, really to do it. I should measure them. And then I've just got some numbers, one, two, six, or whatever here. This is a canvas panel. Uh, I've often thought of doing it on just print out the text, and then put it in a sheet protector because a sheet protector you can just wash off and use it over and over and over again, right? I did not have one. Uh, now, I had another project in mind that I had this fantasy, okay, the project for today. I wanted to take a 15 by 30 canvas, 
which I found out as soon as I got it up on the table was too big for this setup. Can't do it. Uh, but the, uh, I wanted to do a 15 by 30. I've seen someone on Instagram do some beautiful work with fluid acrylics and a brayer and the brushes. I'm not, I'd be real, I'm not talking about Rinska down or hers is more beautiful patterns and we'll get there someday. But this person's just starting with like the deepest purple on the bottom and adding more of a red violet and more of a pink violet till they get to the top. And I thought, well, what if, of course I didn't find any uh, bubble wrap I could use. What if I did the base of the 15 by 30 in brayered colors overlapping? Then what you do is take maybe a bubble wrap paper, put some paint on it and do that press where you put a little pattern on or take a stencil to add a pattern, or the cardboard that looks like uh, the accordion, and you lay paint on that, add some kind of texture over the top of it, and then call me crazy, I wanted to do a version of this Dutch pour that make it drippy, like have the top area be light, and then do my Dutch pour thing, and pull it up and let all the colors drip down to the bottom of the thing. That was my fantasy to do today. <laughs> now, the 15 by 30 didn't fit. Um, I do have some fluid acrylics here. I do have some of the uh, Artist Loft paint paper you could play with. Uh, yeah, the thing is, is if I'm gonna do a Dutch pour just on the top and just let the loose like iridescent colors just kind of drip over the bottom, doesn't matter if they dry at different rates. The whole thing, it's more of a I wouldn't call it mixed media, but it's more of an abstract piece. Uh, I, it wouldn't matter to me if the gel medium mixed with paint that created my texture dried a little bit because I'm not thinking of the whole thing coming down. I'm thinking of the Dutch pour and maybe part of it drying at the top and just drips of it coming down. I know, it's in my head. It's what I've been seeing in my head. What can I say? It's what I've been seeing in my head. I'm sure you guys have those moments where there's things you see in your head that you want to do and uh if we didn't experiment we'd be still d stuck doing the dirty pour flip cup right i really like the difference i don't like there's right or wrong yeah well it's not a right or wrong but i'm not saying it's wrong but people complain all the time about those rigids and so uh the I'm going to try today, Cindy. First, we're going to do the little consistency thing. Then I'm going to make a color that I think should be 50-50 varnish. I'm not going to use the mix that has the gel medium. I'm just going to use straight polypore for the other half and uh, see if it's thin enough to blow. And But first, the consistency test. I tell people on the phone all the time when they're worried about their money, their budget, they want it to work, they want the same consistency. I tell them about this test and yet I've never shown you guys the test on camera myself. Okay, so uh, I am gonna mix up one color because we don't have too much of this turquoise left with whatever we're gonna end up calling this in the next purely release. <laughs> We have plenty of the pinks, but we don't have any more of that turquoise left. And uh, we really don't have any blue at all. We have quite a bit of the pink. There's none of the periwinkle color, but uh, <laughs> I love texture. Yeah, well, we get to learn to love the texture but there is this point where you're like, why is it doing this crack? And then people get freaked out. So I have to at least show the same consistency. So I'm actually measuring my varnish. Oops, you guys didn't see that. My apologies. Calypso Aqua. Calypso's a great, I could just call it Calypso, but Calypso Teal, Calypso Aqua, not bad. This is a teaspoon, okay. 15 mils, I'm gonna put a, yeah, it's true, but if, if you use the file protector every single time, 
right? You'll get used to where maybe it's a six on the file protector, but only a five on regular paper. Renee's got a point, it will run faster. But as long as you're using the same surface every single time, it should give you what you want. Now in this turquoise, we went with blue on blue. I'm just making more of this up, but I wanted to make sure we're giving it exactly the same mix. Oh my goodness. I didn't really think I'd be mixing much paint up today, but I knew I need a popsicle stick here. So let's, uh, so this is that new aqua. Calypso is not a bad name. Sure reminds me of Calypso. Let's add some of our interference blue fine in there. Add some of the sparkle. And I, I think for me, I get so lost to what the color looks like at this point when it's just in the varnish and it looks so pretty and sparkly. I went way overboard with the varnish I was adding. Now it may need more varnish, it may need less, but we're gonna try an equal 50-50 with the polypore. All I know is my hands knew when it was too thin, but I had some of these colors that were way too thin, some of these colors that were way too thick, and uh, I knew when I was doing that, they were gonna dry at different rates, I just knew it. So here's an equal amount. Now I know eventually I will know what a teaspoon of polypor looks like, but just to be safe, I'm measuring. And I actually, even though, well, that's good. The varnish kind of coated the spoon and it came and slipped out real easily, but I like to protect my equipment, even though I know I'm gonna be doing this again. I just tried, it's a brand new spoon. So might as well keep it shiny for a few minutes here. So does this feel thin enough to me? Well, it's sure running like water. And when you're seeing it fall into the paint, there's that area where you see a mound. There's no mound, it's not making a mound. Oh, darn, darn it. That light is giving us a cast. I don't know if this is better. That, that overhead lamp is not allowing me to literally let you see if it's mounding up or not. I don't see much of a mound. I don't know if I should put more varnish in there or not. So again, experiment, experiment, experiment. I thought I'd start with one color and do this pretty teal. Teal is a you know, fun color to play with anyway. It seems it's, it's a great bridge color. It mixes with anything. Okay, so I'm actually going to test this. Now the colors that I should have separated them out, some of these colors, like I said, really felt like water. Others felt like they had more body. Like this looks a little bit thick, right? way thicker, it's plopping. Now you can see it plopping and it's creating that thing on the top. And I don't want that. Let's see how this pink turned out. These are two different shades, I think made with the new, that Barbalicious pink, you guys kept calling that pink, Barbie pink. It's a little bit juicier than this other pink I pulled out. I'm trying to get that mica mixed up there. A tiny bit of a mound. This has more of a mound, this has less. I'm gonna keep this one. 
I'm gonna pull this paint and use it for something later. Too much of a mountain, let it go over to my little mix here. Because I'm gonna use some of these up. Thank you, sweetheart. I think this is the, yeah, this is that tempted tulip. <laughs> you can really tell all the mic on the bottom of it, right? <laughs> It sparkles like crazy, but it did settle over the last few days. Let's see how much thicker this color is. It's way thicker. Yes, we're gonna get a plop, plop, plop. But I do like the value of this. So this might be worth adding a little more varnish to it also, right? Now here is, we did two bright oranges. I think one was Hmm. What it might have been, ah, uh, that Harvest Moon. I don't think it was fennel flower. I know there's a lot of sparkle in this thing. Hold, oh, I know what color this is. This is marigold. It was a bright orange in honor of Miss Sherry Ellis, who loves bright orange. That's right, this is marigold. Now, I've got a little bit of a mound but not much. Now, Janelle asked me in the last broadcast, why no water? I'm choosing to do varnish or GAC 800 to thin stuff down. I don't want to introduce water unless everything's got water in it. This kind of looked like a strange color here. Oh, I think this was the spicy apricot I ended up not using because it kind of didn't fit the color palette after I got that made. So I'll hold off and we'll use the spicy apricot next time. With the other pink, got another version of. Now this is a really electric in your face pink. Woo, actually, I'm really liking that. Wow. I think this is this is that one made with the purely pigments. That's why it's so darn strong. Look at that. A little bit of a mound. So, hmm. I now am learning I don't need that much paint. Now I also had some interferences. I'm. This is thinner. The one I just made is a little bit thinner than all the rest, and they're kind of in a graduated of the thinness. Maybe I should fix them now before I get to the interferences. Cause so I'm gonna try to fix this. I want it the same consistency as this. This feels real watery. That has a plop plop to it. Almost watery enough. Let's add Oh, well, thank you. She's flecking my palettes. Okay, now this is a big cup. So one, I hate wasting varnish. This is driving me crazy using this much. I love my varnish. It's liquid gold. But if I'm going to use it in this technique, and I'm going to try to fix a paint I've already made, this is the only way of doing it. Can I? Ooh, it's almost there. See, there's still a little mound. And this basically is not giving me any mound. So maybe a half more. Don't tell me you guys have not been in this situation before where you found out your paints were not the same consistencies. It's almost losing its, its mound on the break and it hits and it breaks. A little bit more varnish in that one. I'm gonna let that go. I think for the sake of the test, I love this Tempted Tulip, but I am really in love with this neon pink. <laughs> and it is definitely leaving a mound. So let's get a whole teaspoon of that stuff in here. See if it'll loosen this up for me. I mean, the one-to-one -one consistency, almost, almost no mound. 
just a little bit more a half. I know this may seem boring to you guys, but this is not uncommon with the end user goes through at all. Or you yourself have probably gone through. Yeah, that leaves too much of a mound. We're gonna go with a whole teaspoon. Thank you for not saying I'm boring you guys. I now have a whole lot of marigold I need to use up. It is a super pretty color. Still a little bit of a mound when it's dropping. Just a tiny bit. Let's go for a half. Seems to be that I'm adding one and a half to one to every one of these. Now I have the same situation with my um, interferences. And I may not need to use them all. I can brayer some of them on my piece. See, this is the blue. I'm gonna pick a color here to go with. That's the gold. That's the green. I think I'll pass on green. The red is interesting. I'm in love with the violet though. I always love. What do you need to understand? I want to say, okay, so polypore and enamel. They both are made out of a beautiful deep base. Polypore has varnish added to it that was designed for the baby bloomers. Vivid Art Fluid is a very liquidy uh, fluid. It looks like milk in the bottle. This is pure acrylic emulsion with no thickener in it. You can mix this 50-50 with water, spray the back of your canvas and tighten it. You can use 50-50 water and a little bit of a paintbrush and some primary elements and start painting like you would watercolors, but use this as a base. You can make a spray out of this stuff. Take a tablespoon of this stuff with two ounces of water, some primary elements, make a spray, but don't shake it up or the mic is gonna clog the thing and then clog your little spray. And finally, we use this actually for the primary elements. One part our fluid, two parts primary elements, mix it into a paste. You can then take it and use primary elements in epoxy. This is the gateway to use primary elements in epoxy. That's it in a nutshell, as quick as I could give it to you. <laughs> Hope that wasn't too fast. So we have uh, four here, and I know one was too thin. I really am in love with in violet and gold. I don't know why I'm in the love with the violet and gold. Fairy Out Mother scolded me last time for not using red. Um, I'll leave the blue out too. That way we're only testing because I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots. I just want to make sure you're welcome, sweetheart, anytime. That's what I'm here for. And you can always replay that back and hear me say it a couple times if you need to hear that again. Again, this is leaving a mound. <laughs> One of these was thin like water, and the west were really, really thick. And I just knew that I was going to be in trouble. Like, okay, so our gold, look how thick this gold is. Oh, my goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. And I'm not going to use all this gold up. So I'm going to cheat. You're going to watch me pour off some of my gold in here. And I'll add some varnish to it. And I can use this for a bloom swipe. It'll be fine enough for my bloom swipe, but I can have this for today's piece. And it looks almost like the same amount. I'm gonna put half the varnish in, not a whole one. And let's see if we can get to that nice consistency. See it still, it is still giving us a little bit of a mound when it's coming down there. So I didn't want to waste all the varnish and make a whole bunch of gold that I don't need right now. So that is always your option too. Take it, break it down if it's too thick. Save the other half in the cup. Still got a little mound happening there. I'm trying to get it to where it hits the surface. So you've got one where a little mound forms. You've got one where it hits the surface and goes sideways. And then I've seen where it's so thin it makes a little hole like a little concave in the paint. 
I'm just trying to get it to hurt, hit the surface and kind of go out on each end. Thin enough to do that. Just one more little tiny squirt. I know I shouldn't be doing it straight out of the bottle. That's where I get into trouble. But it feels so good, Mom, <laughs> to do that. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with the violet. I got way too much violet mixed up in here to try to sit and thin this whole batch down. So let's get it nicely mixed. Pour that in there. That's enough. Get my top back on. That's plenty. I'm more than enough for this. Do the same thing, add a little varnish. We'll see how close I get. There's still a little mount. Keeps happening, a little bit of a mount. Just a squirt. Makes me feel good to squirt it out of the bottle. All right, so we have the turquoise. So I think we're gonna go one more color. We got pinks, we got turquoises. So I'm either gonna do the periwinkle, I think would be a really different color for this, or the blue. And since I was never really able to make you guys a really pale periwinkle, I put way too much of this color in that last batch I mixed. Well, the mica sits on the bottom, and yeah, air can evaporate out. They will thicken a little bit on standing. She's got a point. Cindy says they can thicken on standing, and she's right. So uh, let's make a quick little batch of this periwinkle color because we really didn't give it its due last time. And since I'm using, well, the turquoise has a blue. That's the only color with blue in it. I just want one drop, and I'm gonna try really careful just to go one drop this time, you guys. One drop, that's it. Last time I put in about seven. <laughs> we didn't get the nice transparency that we needed to be able to see the beautiful mica shimmering in this, right? So that turned out to be a nice mix. Let's, since I already got the blue out, let's put some Sparkle blue in this, and some of the interference fine in here. Boy, I need to put more in this cup. I'm getting low. Oh, it's so pretty when it starts to mix. I just love, this is the funnest part. I'm telling you, I get an endorphin rush or whatever it is just doing this. Are you kidding? That's why, even if you don't feel good, Laying some colors down is very therapeutic. Can be anyway. Okay, I'm gonna do this uh, it, it, a little bit. It's a periwinkle color. The Papillon is close. It's close. So I'm letting this strip get this big old bottle out of the way. I think we're done with that. Get my spoon wiped up. Well, thank you, Renee. That's very kind of you, honey. Renee said it's nice as the creator that I do this for you guys. Now, wow, that is way more sparkly than the last time I measured this. I weighed this out. Again, that's still, there is no mound. So it's possible even these other colors are not gonna dry at the same rate. Okay, so. First time I've ever tried to do it on one of these boards. And to do it correctly, it should be the same amount of paint on each one, which is kind of hard to do when you're eyeballing it. So I'm literally going to measure these. Here's that violet. I know this is tedious. But let's really see if we're on. Now, the, the, the recipe I think that'll work for the Dutch pour is that blue and this periwinkle that I made. 
You can even tell when I put it on there. Boy, Jasmine is all over my shoulder. She is wondering what we're doing here. <laughs> my cats sometimes like to be part of the broadcast. Here's the gold that I thinned down. Here's the blue we made, that turquoise we made in the beginning. Yeah, this is really thin and watery. Harley, get off my drawing chamber. <laughs> you heard that big kaboop? He's jumping down from the vaulted area down on the top of my resin chamber. Someday, when I move, I'll show you photos of my resin chamber. I built myself out of PVC tubing and plastic. It's just a drying area. Doesn't have to be epoxy, but... I did do it with uh, resin in mind when I did it. Here is that pink that we thinned down, that hot, hot, hot Barbie pink. Yeah, everything's at all. Believe me, I'm just allowed to live in their house, Kath. Catherine said her cat thinks everything's a toy. Yeah. We're just, we're just allowed to be passengers in their house, right? Okay, now I gotta do something with all these things I got mixed up, get them out of the way. Give me a second, get this thing cleaned off. I don't wanna taint my spoon. <sighs> all right, anything we're not gonna use gets pulled up, put away. I'm not gonna use this really thick paint. Get out of our way. <sighs> I'm curious myself. Now I don't have a timer in this. I mean, I can count to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh oh, don't stick. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Moment of madness. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. Seven, eight. Now, the two I just made are running the fastest. The orange I have thin enough. So what does that tell me? My interference gold and my violet need a tad more varnish. I know I'm going to try to be all scientific about this. Ha, ha, ha. You guys can laugh at me now. So I don't think putting a whole one in, I'm just going to go half on each one of them. This this and this seem to be the same. They're the same, almost the perfect consistency with these interferences. But we are trying for a mystical Dutch pour uh, thing. So there's a half in each one. This seems the thinner of them all. I mean, thinner of the ones that I tried to fix. So, but there's a lot in this mix so a half may, see, I feel like I wasted paint on this marigold. I put a whole one in here only because there's so much in this cup, right? Now, I'm not going to do a second test, but at home, you could do a second test. Make sure if you're going to do a really big project, some piece you're going to sell, right? But this is going to be close enough for what we're going to experiment with today. Now, I got a little coaching from Saskia about how to use this gun I have. Most air dry blow dryers have the L shape, that crook. I have this one that's straight, but it has a good thingy on it. And so she told me to go straight down a certain point with a go do this. And I'm still learning that. I am not going to be an expert at this blow, but I will do my very best for you if that's okay with you guys 
Now, these paints are way in my way. I, I, when I get these, this other board on here, I'm gonna try to paint with my brayer. I need all this other stuff out of the way. So I'm just trying to make room because the Dutch part in the top is gonna come last. I am going to live out my fantasy today. This is what I've been imagining, laying in chair, in the chair sick for the last couple days, wanting to do this. So we'll see how my fantasy works out. Now I need, I will need my cell activator. We're gonna end up making a white, a custom cell activator if we don't use the white. All right, so the concept is I, like I said, I wanted to start with a 15 by 30, something that was skinny and long. So when I did a Dutch pour off the top, the drips would come down, okay? That's what you do. You think of it and then you make it, you're right. Now, uh, the cell activator more than likely is going to be turquoise and white. So, I mean, we've already got some turquoise in there. Um, that's okay, I can leave this on here for safety. These little paint uh, sheets are for laying paint on and picking them up with a brush. So I don't need to have the whole pad here, but I am gonna need these sheets. And this has never been attempted. Oh, Harley, my goodness, dude, what did you just do? Dude, oh, nothing's broken. They're just so stinking careless. That's what having fur babies is all about, I guess. So we're going to try. Again, I wish it was a little bit skinnier, but I just have this idea. I saw this person do this thing on Instagram, and I went, oh, I got to try this. He just, he leaped up on this thing where I've got tools sitting, so he couldn't make a landing, and when he slipped off, he dumped over a thing of brushes on the floor. Not a big deal. He's okay. Baby's all right. <laughs> Let me get this camera tightened up. Come on, dude. Gets up nice and tight so we can see how this works. He's okay. He's my big baby. Now it's still not quite high enough, is it? Dag nabbit to show the whole thing. Okay, let's see if I can get it up one more little inch. No, that's as high as it's going to let me go right now. Now, if I was going to paint it like this way, well, you could probably see the whole thing. But the idea is I want to go dark. I can move the camera back and forth this way so we can start in the darker area. I want to go dark to light. Uh, but I think I'm actually going to use some vivid, intense white, believe it or not. just to map out the light area on the top. And I think I got a big old brush here that I can do this with. So, make sure I got my brand new bottle. Uh-oh, well, <laughs> that was fun. First thing you gotta do is shake it and spray some everywhere, right? That's kind of the, so I'm gonna put some of the white down. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, the crazy kitties. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the Vivid Intense White, just make sure I blocked out some area that's white here. not going to need more than that on the white. All right. So <laughs> yeah, I got a little paint splatter on this thing. I kind of want to mix the darkest color. 
And we have Rouge Violet. We also have the Bordeaux. Because I want to go with the darkest red violet I can get my hands on. You only have one kitty nowadays? Well, there's plenty in the neighborhood that'll want to be adopted, girl. Trust me. They come right over the fence. Okay, so that is, that's Bordeaux. And I'm actually going to put some of the uh, royal violet in that, the pure, purely pigments royal violet. And I'm going for one, two, three, four, five drops mixed into that Bordeaux. It's not a bad mix. Okay. This is going to be kind of crazy, but she's literally burying the paints down. I don't know if it's been painted or not already. I know when Rinska works with her fluid acrylics, she does spray the canvas with a little bit of water to get it to take. But I want this, this is an unprimed canvas. So we're gonna find out even if this is possible. Maybe I should have painted it. Yes, possibly. Hmm, I feel like just taking that thing over, rolling it over and putting all that paint. I don't wanna waste any of it. <sighs> Come on, buddy, move for me. That's not dark enough. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Plan B. I need some more paint on here. So I've got more of the Rouge Violet. I'm just gonna go right for it. Some of the Bordeaux. Now I really, this is why we're supposed to prime our canvas kids. And I do have these great brushes. So I'm gonna try, instead of doing the brayer, I'm gonna use my Liquitex Freestyle brush. Okay? Because that should, yeah, there you go. That's gonna get into the crevices of the canvas much better than that brayer. Her paint might have been much thicker and maybe she brushed her first base down. You know, I mean, you do the same thing, right? You see somebody on, the, on YouTube or Instagram, you gotta do what they're doing See, I can get my sides with that dark purple first. There was still a little bit of water left on the canvas. That's also helping this paint flow. Part of me wants to include this rouge violet now. And since there's a lot of the dark color on this brush, I'm gonna use one of my other brushes to incorporate the rouge violet. Now there's no water on this. I'm just gonna let it do its thing as it comes up. Now remember, I added white here, okay? Ooh, I like the inconsistency of that. I don't think I want it to all look perfect. 
Now I'm gonna push this up a little bit. See, make sure we can get this in focus. I also have some fluorescent red violet, okay? I'm gonna squirt some of that on here as soon as it opens up for me. Because my, for some reason, my paint cap has some paint stuck in it. So I'm gonna have to pour a little bit of this on my canvas. I'm doing the fluorescent red violet. That's the vivid intense. And it's not because I want it to glow in the dark, okay? I want some variation on this piece. I don't necessarily want to meld it all together. I'd rather have some streaks of that across and have it look like it's all the same, right? Hmm. That's turning out pretty interesting. You're having a hard time hearing me? Is that because the camera's up so high? Sorry, guys. Sorry. Uh, is this better? Let me know if you can hear me now. See, I don't like what, I don't like what my uh, sprayer does. Yeah, I'm probably muttering to myself. Is that better now? If you guys can hear me. Okay, well, it is a little bit uh, there for it. Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do to this top part. Remember, I have this white here. I'm kinda liking what this fluorescent violet is doing in the white. I'm getting the edges here. If you guys can't see me do that, I'm gonna get these edges while I can. When am I gonna have the chance to have the perfect color to do these edges, except now? <laughs> All right, that's kind of interesting. It wasn't quite what she did. See, I had this fantasy of then even including, <laughs> it's on the table. And you may think I'm gonna ruin it now, we'll see. I don't need to, I don't need that much over that white again, I'm gonna flip it around. But I thought, of course this paint's kind of thick now. I kind of wanted to incorporate either some Indian yellow or Tuscan gold for those orange lovers out there that I know so well. Give me one second, I gotta get it. I didn't really plan on using these square brushes and I need to get a water receptacle for them as soon as possible so they don't get ruined. These are really great brushes. You don't want to ruin. So, get some water poured off into my receptacle. And then I got some place to put them. You may or may not see me put them in here, but they need to be protected. That's one thing. Those brushes are not cheap. These are a cheaper version of them. They're very soft. They're great for softening your work. Like say you've got something down and then you just want to soften with no more extra paint you can. Okay. Now this looks still a little bit too purple to me. So I wanted to do an Indian yellow or Tuscan sun. Close your eyes if you think this is a bad idea, you guys. Now this, the Tuscan Sun has actually got a gold. Tuscan Gold actually has some, some sparkle to it. 
So it's just to break it up. Had I had time to find some kind of a texture uh, component like the bubble wrap or had a stencil here with patterns and some gel medium made, it would make it more interesting. I'm trying to shake this up. But maybe just a, a little vein of it here. You know, a little partial vein here. Again, you guys can all yell at me now if I screwed it up. <laughs> but can I tell you how much fun I'm having? Oh my goodness! I mean, I, this is fun. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of these. This is a box of brushes that Harley knocked over. They're meant for only smoothing. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna let it smooth in to my piece. God, my water receptacle. Gotta quit having my thing go off. Now there's still paint on this brush, right? So I can go this way. Again, still paint on the brush. You know, this looks too like a straight line. I kind of had hoped it would come down here. Now I could take another clean brush. I got a bigger one here and possibly remove some of this because it will smooth without adding more. There we go. There's a little bit of a gold nugget there. I don't need in there into that paint. I'm gonna take the smooth side of the brush, smooth it slightly. I mean, this after all is my piece, right? <laughs> but just the smoothie makes it look more irregular. Now, I don't know, it's different. We'll see what it looks like when I do my whole drippy thing. But it was my experiment I had in my head. And I needed to get this out of my brain. Get the vivid intense out of the way. Because we're going to lay down some colors here. And try to blow it. <clears throat> That's the challenge with the lives, everybody. Because it is live. There is no hiding what happens. I don't get to scrape it and then make you think, oh, look how perfect it was. Because you see the after piece. Now, look, I'm standing up looking at this. It still looks a little bit strong. That gold is kind of dominating things. So, maybe we add a little fluorescent violet back in. <laughs> I can hear John go, no, Leslie, no, don't do it. Well, it's just a little bit too gold right in here. Just a little bit. So I always have an option to smooth more violet in there, right? Why not? Just touch it up a bit. Well, look at how much gold just came off of that. Wow. Wow. Here I'm trying to smooth it out and I'm adding more back. My receptacle's getting really full, by the way. Every one of them is going into this little thing. Okay, so let's try our little Dutch pour experiment on the top. That's kind of the whole point of this. Uh, Of course, maybe with all this color on here, I should just keep it to plain old white cell activator. Okay, so if I wanted a line of colors that I was gonna go blow paint over this way, paint over this way, I guess my colors would be centered. 
most of the time, everybody's worried about if they get that snake pattern, right? And I'm trying to avoid that. So since we have so much of this color, again, I gotta be careful. Remember I used way too much last time. So I'm gonna try to be really minimal if that's even possible for me. I don't need a big pile of paint there. I just need enough color to blow. I've got my interference violet here. See, I don't mind if, if there's extra interference that drips down. I guess that's what I was envisioning. Okay, so I've used the dark pink, the light pink. We haven't used our little dribble of periwinkle. I think I'm doing pretty good not using too much of each color this time around. Get that lighter pink in here. I see all kinds of comments coming across, but I can't read anything, guys, because I'm standing up. So can't see what anybody's saying. If someone's trying to correct me or help me fix something, I'm sorry, I can't see your comments yet and then I think this is the gold my little spoon came out of it colors are pretty I'm gonna not use that weird golden maple that I made last time if you noticed I didn't even test its thinness this time I was gonna let the orange do the job okay so I have some white cell activator here uh, I'm wondering, maybe I should mix a tiny bit of aqua cell activator with the white before we get going. I think I'd like to have that option up against all that pink and purple. So uh, if you guys can see me here, I'm pouring some white cell activator in the cup or it got made. Only thing is I gotta find the darn vibrant aqua. Yes. Here we go, vibrant aqua. I'm not gonna be able to pull the camera back and forth because it's set for while I'm standing. So here is your one, two drops this time of Vibrant Aqua in the Amsterdam White Cell Activator. with because this will be really a nice contrast with that red violet below white and this color will be a really pretty contrast right so okay so I'm going to dribble a little bit of cell activator because normally a Dutch pour isn't made with cell activator that's what I'm doing that's different I think a cell activator could be very much be part of a Dutch pour. And then I'm going to use the white. And this is the part where I struggle. So I'm going to crown the whole thing with white. This whole thing should have white cell activator top and bottom all the way around it. So it can blow over and blow back. 
At least that's what I'm going to try. Hopefully you guys can see me do this. It's actually, no, it's, it's actually one part Amsterdam titanium white, four parts Australian Floetrol. It's my regular cell activator, the four to one. You could use less. You are absolutely right. 50-50 would probably give you the same effect. And uh, you'd be using less of the Australian Floetrol. Good point. This stuff's not cheap. I want insurance. For me, I want the insurance. If I was going to make some pieces that I could actually sell, eventually I'd probably step up to this recipe because then every single time we know it's going to work, right? All right, so blowing it, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it at this angle. I'm, I'm not going to. So we're going to try it at this angle. Get it the majority of here. Again, this is where I do not have a lot of expertise is the blowing. Okay, colors are interesting. I don't mind them at all. Now let's see if this works. Can I make it drip? I'm just gonna kind of touch up the top here so you don't have these purple spots on top. And will it work? Will it drip for me? I realize this is not going to look like a traditional Dutch pour at all. Okay, looks a little crazy because we're not spinning. We don't have control. I don't know, it looks like all the color is leaving the top though. Should I pull some of it back up? That's gonna be, <laughs> I didn't expect this to do this. But I'm, oh, I'm liking what's happening here as far as the colors pulling back. That is really interesting. 
This is really, it's really getting pretty right in here. I know you guys can't see it all because I'm at an angle, but okay, so well, I'm not sure if the cells did anything. <laughs> I'm not sure of anything at all, <laughs> except I think it's really interesting. And if I had a really cool texture on the bottom, my instinct would be to let this dry and only spot resin the top and leave this natural. And so I imagine this on a big, long, skinny canvas. Like I said, you can take a gel medium and a bubble wrap and do the pop texture and you can do texture with, you know, crinkled paper. Get some really interesting texture on the bottom but I am really loving this color combination. It's crazy what it's doing. Now, I, I, I don't want to mess with it. I see one little bubble that probably needs to be popped. Let me get something that I can touch that with. A little bamboo skewer. I see a little bubble right there. Right there, let's get that little bitty bubble out. Pop, 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 pop. Well, yeah, I know, giving up control, giving up control is really interesting, guys. So I'm gonna bring the camera down. It lets me, I have it pretty tight. It's not too bad of a view from here, actually. Pretty shocking. We're able to sort of see it. Uh, I do like the color combinations. I love that high pink. So, ha, ha, you guys are so sweet. Ah, hey, Janelle. <laughs> so, um, that's it for today. I mean, I don't have a spin or anything. I can't plop it off and do it in second piece. I've been dying to see what the vivid acrylics look on the straight canvas. I've been dying to try my little uh, haku brushes or whatever the things are. It really went on nicely. I think I need to try that technique more for a base coating again. And uh, yeah, my golden hot pink's a little bit wild, but it'll probably tone down after it's, it's uh, tried a bit. But that was that Tuscan gold. That's that vivid, intense, tense Tuscan gold in our opal uh, section there in the vivid acrylics. Thank you, guys. So, uh, like I said, the membership drive is going to go on at least till the 15th. Anybody worried about it, you can do it. There's a few gift cards I still have to make. Um, probably tomorrow. I don't think it's a good idea to do a Sunday broadcast. I think I need to catch up on my colors, catch up on the gift cards, get everything caught up and get some rest. So I will see you guys Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining me and bye guys.